I've already set four world records, broke four world records. Um, little kids do come up and they say, oh, you know, you could be my grandma, but I wish my grandma would do it. In a race against the fastest 76-year-old sprinter on the planet, I expected to lose, just not quite by that much. By many measures, BJ has the fitness of a very fit 20-year-old athlete. Do you think being fit has added years to your life? If so, how many? How many years did fitness add to your life? At least 20. 20 years? <laughs> I wanted a glorious second act to my life. So at age 50, with these super senior mentors and a team of expert advisors, I set out to run my way into super fitness. Forty years ago, women weren't allowed to run marathons. Preconceived notions about what can and cannot be done need to be thrown out. We need to reevaluate what we're all capable of and go for it. What I want to know is striving for super fitness at age 50, is it good for my health? <laughs> so is that training, uh, aerobic exercise, anaerobic exercise, strength training, they all have positive effects on the human body regardless of what age we are. So if age doesn't matter, I thought I'd give myself a break and take on the world's oldest, greatest athlete. She told me I had another 44 years to catch up to her. The women swarmed me. <clears throat> How much do you sleep? Do you have a coach? <laughs> <laughs> what do you eat? And I thought to myself, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> so there was my very first world record. I must feel very good about this. Why don't I enjoy it? So I went shopping. <laughs> I was doing my thing, but apparently I was doing all kinds of things that were unusual. Like in Montreal, in McGill, they tested my muscle. In Chicago, they tested my brain. And again, their analysis was that they compared me to a 60-year-old. I didn't know that I had broken BJ's record. I did not know. Which one was that? <laughs> She's breaking them all. <laughs> the story of my life, I never really knew that I was breaking records. I'm a different type. I don't keep records, I don't wear a watch, and I don't have a heart monitor. I never know what's going on. And I just run by the way I feel and feel good and I'll do but it. Definitely, I think uh, that being fit does extend your life. And thanks to Olga making me aware of track and field. Um, yeah, I hope to be around for a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> I want to break some of August's records. <laughs> if I didn't have a goal, I don't know what I would do, because it is just... Yeah. Yeah. I would go out in any kind of weather. I mean, I, it, I don't hesitate. If today is a running day, it's snowing, it's blowing, it's raining, whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Ryan, is Ryan around here? Or Dan Little? Ryan or Dan? Okay, Ryan or Dan Little? The show on the road here. Okay, Ryan, you're up there. Ryan, you're going to have to go faster. Ryan, you're going to have to go faster. 141, a personal fourth by four minutes. Five minutes. So I'm thrilled. I had an amazing race and I was actually picking up speed in the last 5k. Rather than hitting the wall, I was gaining speed. I was felt fantastic. Uh, so, you know, it was an awesome race. What's happening in women's running is really phenomenal. I, I don't think I expected in my lifetime to see more women runners than men. So it's never too late to be the athlete you want to be and it's also never too late to get it back. It is really a fitness and empowerment revolution. So the legacy is that in the future, increasing numbers of women, not just in North America, but around the world, are going to grow up 
without a sense of limitation. Mm. They're gonna realize they can do anything. The more you do, the more you can do. Talent is everywhere. It only needs an opportunity. And, and running is so simple and so cheap and, and accessible. Anybody can do it. I can only see um, it making very, very big changes globally.